Whenever I talk about all the benefits of living overseas, whether it's my trifecta method of having three different homes in different places, whether it's settling yourself in one tax-friendly country, one of the things that I get pushed back on is, but won't I be unsafe? People have a tendency to feel like their country, where they live, is the safest place on Earth. So today, I'm going to go through something called the Global Peace Index. I'm going to share with you some of the most dangerous countries in the world so that you can avoid those. And I'm, I'm going to share with you why your country may just not be as safe as you think. I am Andrew Henderson, and here at Nomad Capitalist, our five magic words are go where you're treated best. That means find the place with the lowest tax rate, find the place with the most safety, find the place that offers you the best benefits. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. And that's why today I want to talk about the most dangerous countries in the world to show you why living overseas just isn't as unsafe as you think. In fact, in all of my years crisscrossing the world, I've been uh, a perpetual traveler. I've lived my trifecta method. I own homes around the world, but I've done it, I've lived overseas all different ways. I've had only one incident in the capital city of Nicaragua where someone actually came and put a gun in my face. And quite frankly, I can't say that I'm that surprised that it happened. Capital cities in Central America do rank among the highest for violent crime. And it's why we don't talk about capital cities in Central America that often. But here's the good news about the most dangerous countries in the world. There are different studies uh, this one's from the Global Peace Index, but here's the good news. You're not going to live in any of them. So let me go through the top 10 list and we'll go from there. Number one, most dangerous country in the world, Afghanistan. Probably not a country you've heard us talking about a lot here in this channel. Lots of issues with insurgents, all that kind of stuff in Afghanistan. Number two, Syria. I have a civil war going on. It's been a very dangerous place, unfortunately. They come in number two. Can't say I've heard anyone saying I'm moving to Syria. Number three, Iraq. Number four, South Sudan, civil unrest ever since their independence. It's been a problem. Number five, Yemen, obviously challenges there. Six, Somalia. What's interesting is you do see some Somali Americans going back to Somalia, tax-free country, by the way. You see them going back and, and having tremendous business opportunities. Obviously, not the safest place. They've found ways to stay safe, but on a global level, number six, Somalia. Number seven, Libya. Number eight, uh, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the big Congo. Number nine, the Central African Republic. And number 10 is Russia. And when you dig deeper on Russia, that may be the one country in this list somebody thought of visiting or living in. Uh, obviously, St. Petersburg, Moscow, if you were to pull those out, they wouldn't be anywhere near the top 10. You're largely looking at some of the areas to the south, the Dagestans, the Chechnyas. Those areas have more violence, certainly uh, you know, Moscow is not perfect the way New York is not perfect, but, you know, Russia, obviously a much bigger country than some of these, uh, still probably not one that's on a lot of your lists. Now, where do other countries rank? Well, the U.S., for example, ranked 36th uh, in most dangerous country. That was ranked more dangerous than Honduras, which is among one of the murder capitals of the world, Tegucigalpa, uh, San Pedro Sulo, not good places to be. If you want to go to Honduras, you're probably going to go to, to Roatan, the island uh, off the coast. So on a national basis, the U.S. ranked as a more dangerous country than even some of the Central American countries that I said probably weren't some of the safest, at least the northern Central, Europe, uh, Central American countries. And so you could say, yeah, well, you know, the U.S., it has its dangerous parts and it's not dangerous parts. And that's exactly what I tell people about why living overseas is much safer than you imagine. Because, you know, if you are from the U.S. as I am, you know that where you live may be relatively safe. And you also know those parts of town where things aren't that safe and you don't live there. You don't go to you know, the worst parts of Chicago at night. Now, we've seen more places in the United States, in the U.K., in other places where you've seen a rise of violence, where you've seen you know, people having protests, having riots, and sometimes those have gotten uh, a little violent. And so I certainly think that you know, in cities like New York, they're heading in the wrong direction. Cities like San Francisco, uh, heading in the wrong direction. And meanwhile, when I talk to people here in Belgrade, for example, they struggle to find any area of the city where you couldn't go day or night and feel safe. 
It is not like Managua here or in many places of the world. And so the point is, whenever you're going to move overseas, you are going to choose the place that's safe. I have a home in Bogota, and no doubt there are parts of Bogota and parts of Colombia that aren't as safe. But if you're living in the area that matches the place that you currently live, I think you'll be perfectly safe. You take normal precautions the way that you would anywhere, but in all of my years of being constantly out of my home country, uh, I've only had that one incident, and quite frankly, uh, probably could have predicted it, and really, you know, Managua, Nicaragua, not high on anyone's list. So let's go through a couple of other countries on the list. Coming in at number 12, Turkey. Again, I've spent plenty of time in the best parts of Istanbul. Uh, no problems. I've been there many, 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 many times. Haven't had so much as, you know, someone take a wallet. But overall, Turkey, number 12. Number 14, Ukraine. Same thing. Spent time in Kiev. You, you spend time in where you'd spend in Kiev, you're probably going to be okay. In fact, I think that if you're spending time in those parts of Istanbul and Kiev, it's going to be safer than comparable parts of a place like Barcelona, where I've had multiple clients of ours say that either they or their friends, when they were in Barcelona, had these gangs come up and surround them, take the watch right off their wrist, and then run off with their $50,000 watch. Definitely an issue in a place like Spain. And I think you would do better in the comparable areas in those countries, but they do rank 12 and 14. Number 18, Israel. Number 21, Colombia. Certainly not a surprise to many people, but again, I think there's areas that would be uh, safer than others. Number 24, Mexico. Again, not a surprise. You go to Polanco in Mexico City. You go to Merida, universally recognized as one of the safest parts of Mexico. Uh, you can be pretty safe. Obviously, there are parts of Mexico where you want to be very careful. Uh, obviously, also some of these crime statistics are against certain groups of people that you may not be a part of. Number 30, the Philippines. I've spent time in Manila, uh, Cebu, Davao, been all over the Philippines, never a problem. Obviously, this is anecdotal. They do rank number 30, but I think that if you are in uh, you know, the fort in Manila, uh, you're going to be better off than number 30 on a global level. Number 34, Azerbaijan. Probably not a place most people were considering, but they do rank at number 34. Countries that were better than the average, better than most Western countries. South Korea, the United Kingdom, uh, Malaysia, where I spend time, Indonesia, Japan, no surprise there. So not only are there safe countries that have low, moderate taxes, you know, the UAEs rank pretty safe in all these lists, uh, zero tax countries like that, Monaco, doubt too many people expect crime there. So, you know, a couple things. You're not living in these most dangerous countries. Your country probably isn't as safe as you think. And if you find the right areas in any country, you'll be fine. Some people are going to be a bit more adventurous. I'm willing to take what I think is a minimal risk, you know, being in a place like Bogota, going to a place like Mexico City, taking ba basic precautions. The more time I spend there, the more I realize how to adapt in what I call a focus city environment. Uh, but other people, you might just say, you know what, give me the safest places. Many of those are in places like Eastern Europe, Tbilisi in Georgia. Uh, again, I mentioned Belgrade. Uh, many of them are in Asia, places like Malaysia, South Korea in particular, Japan, Singapore, of course, uber safe. And so you can choose how safe you want to be, but danger is not a reason to not travel or live overseas. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.